Hey guys, Jay Hoyt here. Before we get into today's video, I want to say thank you guys so much for all the support. But we are pushing for 1,000 subscribers. So make sure you go down below, check. Are you subscribed? If you're not, or if you're brand new to my channel, make sure to go down there, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those post notifications so you never miss an upload. And don't forget, you can always change your mind later. <laughs> What's on guys, Jehoi back with you today. Welcome back to episode number 32 of our franchise mode with the Detroit Red Wings. If you guys were here last episode, you guys saw an incredible start to our year, right? We Currently we sit right below me here, 30, 10, and one, and we currently sit number one in the entire league right now as far as points go and as far as best record goes so obviously we did something right we have all the pieces we could possibly need to push towards the playoffs of course though we'll probably stock up just to get a couple extra more nhl ready bodies uh you know down the road maybe potentially get an upgrade on defense that i said in last episode but we're gonna continue this on right we're in a good spot i don't want to make any changes because uh, everything's going really good right now and uh, you know, any change we could possibly make wouldn't be a drastic one and it may hurt us a lot more than it might help us. So let's just get right into it though. Start at 30, 10, and 1. Let's get up to the trade deadline and see what we can do. So we start off today's video with a loss versus the Buffalo Sabres. We had their number early on in the year, uh, but ever since then, I think they've had ours uh, you know, after that. But either way, let's continue to rebound here, continue to get these wins, and, uh, you know, slowly build towards the trade deadline and increase that points total. Because the earlier we're in, the earlier we can kind of take a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a relaxing breath, and uh, we'll be focusing on, of course, the playoffs. But, of course, the Sabres, as usual, are right on our tail by one point so as we continue here i don't have any trades in mind so we'll have to go out and look to see what's available but it's just going to kind of be business as usual see what's out there see what makes sense i'm not going to bring anybody in that doesn't make sense or change up the team dramatically just to get someone that might be a better overall i'm not going to do that i'm going to play it patient you know i'm going to let our team that's been rocking all year long uh, you know, let them do what they do. Uh, but speaking of what we're doing, I think we dropped in the standings, if I saw correctly. Yeah, we dropped down. Uh, so it's only by six points. Oh, we have a, wow. Did I really just see how, like five people in our division are all at, holy cow. Is that, it's six out of eight of our teams in our division are all fighting for the top so okay so we have a lot of points so wild card should be ours uh as far as in our division where we might have two there rather than one so unless somebody in the metro goes absolutely insane the rest of the year then uh you know maybe we'll uh we'll have to start worrying but you know 74 points it's not bad we're six off the top with the sabers uh canadians are up there as well maple leaves so we gotta look out for them uh, of course we face off against the maple leaves in our next game and uh, we'll have to continue up here right after that carolina game to uh see where we're officially at going into the trade deadline well our last 10 hasn't been that great we had a great start to the year i'm hoping to end it great as well but this recent you know uh form from our team is uh not proving very uh very optimistic here so uh, our last set hasn't been great but let's go see what our guys are doing and see what we can improve on so larkin is leading the way with a point per game pace everyone else has kind of fallen off just a little bit and one thing I'm really noticing here is our second line, Zadina, Wright, and Raymond, all severely minus, uh, which obviously is not something I'm very happy with, but what could we do 
to help out that line. Now we could make a line change. We could do that just to kind of throw a different look in there. Um, you know, McIntyre is performing really well. Do we want to slot him up there, right? 84 overall. Raymond drop him down as an 89 overall. Does he fit on the third line? Uh, no, he doesn't. So that's where it kind of hurts us a little bit as we acquire, or we have such a perfect team with all the line fits that no one can really go anywhere else, which is kind of the, you know, the crappy part about it as well. Uh, but even then, I can't really fault our forwards too much, right? We have a lot of points with our forwards and uh, 47 plus for our top nine is pretty incredible as it is. Uh, but the one name I don't see up there, of course, is Norris. But uh, you, as usual, we don't really expect uh, points from him. He's just kind of there to uh, to hold that spot down. Uh, he's got a game-winning goal on the year. Uh, nothing on the penalty kill. Playing uh, just about 10 minutes a night, uh, as well as Rice or Reese. So not uh, interesting there. Maybe we'll have to check out the time on ice just to see if everyone's getting you know kind of what they should be. Uh, as well. So uh, we'll check that out here in a second. I'll probably do that off camera since it's not really that exciting. But um, okay. So our defensemen are performing, or the three defensemen we're looking at, and Hanif and Ekblad and Gudis, right? All those guys are performing really well. Points wise, they're there. And uh, Hannafin was on, after our last episode, I said he was having a great year. He's actually, he was on pace for a career year. I think it's like 62 or 63 points or something like that is his career best. So he's on pace for that uh, as we look to go forward here. Um, but again, our second line uh, seems to be getting pretty messed up there uh, when they go out. So our second line forwards and our second line defensemen are both severely minus. Now, as I said in last video, I wanted to upgrade our defensive core, uh, but I wanted to see how this would all play out uh, as we went throughout the season. That was our one downfall going into this year that we traded away Morgan Riley, who was at 86 overall, playing on that second line, but it did give an opportunity for Corrado, for Lettinen to come up here and play and get that playing time uh, that they've so desperately, I don't wanna say been deserving, but so uh, been seeing the AHL just kind of waiting uh, for that chance to uh, get into the NHL lineup. But I definitely wanna see what's out there as far as defensemen go. Uh, getting someone that would hopefully be like mid 80s, uh, hopefully a little bit higher than that, but maybe mid 80s, uh, that can play in that second line with Gudis, hopefully help that out. We might have to trade Corrado or Latin in that deal to make it go through. Uh, but we definitely need to get uh, something for the future here because Hannafin and Ekblad are, are 33, 34 years old. So that's going to have to be something we're watching out for. Uh, we probably have maybe one or two more seasons in uh, in this franchise mode before we get into NHL 22. Uh, maybe one, like I said, maybe two. Not exactly sure. But what do I want to do here? I definitely got to look for an upgrade. Uh, you know, that the minus 13 is definitely hurting us. Our second line is definitely hurting us. And, uh, ooh, this is where it gets interesting. So if you guys remember, Reza was, what, 13-0 and 0 or something like that to start out the year. He's still having a good year, technically as the backup, technically not. Uh, if you look at the uh, numbers here, it looks like they're kind of even uh, as far as games played go. Actually, not that's not close at all. Uh, they're uh, a pretty good uh, portion away here. But Zanetti got hit hard uh, the last little bit. So he dropped down to an 87 overall, or no, I guess he stayed an 87 overall. And uh, Reza's been, uh, you know, the one keeping it uh, relatively intact. But um, I'm trying to figure out what to do. Because obviously I don't want to give up on either of these guys, right? They're both, uh, you know, huge parts of our team. Uh, but just Zanetti probably was starting most of those games and probably just got rocked in, in, in most of this month. So um, I don't know what we're going to do there. But we'll uh, we'll have to uh, check out everything else and see if we can help him out in any way, shape, or form. Because uh, obviously that is a lot of goals to allow in uh, in the limited time he's been in there. So almost four goals a game. It's not what we want to see. Obviously, uh, it's his first full year of starting, I believe. Yeah, because last year we had him as a uh, as a backup. So yeah, this is his first year as a starter. So hopefully it's just uh, you know kind of shaking off the uh, the rust and shaking off the. Uh, the jitters of the, the first full year in the NHL. But let's go take a look at the team stats. So we end up dropping from number one to number nine. So 
We don't sit in a bad position, right? Points wise, we're only six, I believe it is, out of first, or maybe it's eight out of first place. So that's definitely doable. One little stretch of uh, games, a homestand, uh, an away trip, whatever it may be, would definitely put us back right where we want to be. But unfortunately, it's kind of everyone right in our division. So that's where uh, the crappy part comes in, if you will. But let's go see what's going on with our team that's making us. Uh, you know, have this little bit of a struggle and see, uh, you know, what's happening here. So 234 goals uh, for so far this year. That's within like the top 10, 15. So I'm not really too concerned about goals, uh, right? Our goals against has definitely been, uh, or our goals for has never really been a problem. Uh, and once we had everyone uh, together, uh, our goals against, I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, we'll uh, we'll go down here. So we sit like bottom 10 or so, or top 10, bottom 10, whichever way you want to look at it. The good part of that, um, maybe we'll go over to Dallas and see what they're doing, or uh, maybe check out their defensive core and, uh, and hopefully help out uh, with our uh, team here. Power play goals, uh, we work pretty good with there. Yeah, 65 over our uh, 65 goals so far. That's I think top five there. Uh, penalty or power play percentage. We're up there as well, so our power play is performing. Can't say anything bad about that. Penalty kill percentage, I didn't actually see what it was, but where are we? So the Dallas Stars once again up to the top. So they actually play well defensively, so it must be their offense not working out. Uh, but either then, 77.5%. That's not atrocious, but like I'd like it to be 80 plus. That kind of signifies that there's not really much of a problem. Uh, but 16, 13, and 2 at home, 20 and 10 away, and our last 10 hasn't been that great. 2 and 8 overall. So we're at the trade deadline now. Now's the time to make moves, and it's our last chance to make some moves before we get to the Stanley Cup playoffs. And of course, we gotta make it to the Stanley Cup playoffs. Although we have the points, we gotta make sure we get in. So let's go scour the market, see what's out there, and see if we can make some upgrades. So we are back with our first trade after our other one that we spent about 30 minutes setting up didn't end up going through but here we are with our second try at trying to get another piece to add to our squad for the rest of the year and with this one it's going to help out for next year and hopefully the upcoming years as well and for the rest of this franchise mode. So the trade goes like this. So we're gonna be trading away Corrado in this one. Now, yes, he's early in his career and uh, you know he's basically still on an entry level contract and I would love to keep him and everything, but it's just not working out. Plus uh, in this deal, we're gonna have to get rid of him just because of what spot he it opens up and uh, you know what we'll be getting back for it. So second in this trade, we're gonna trade Letnin in this one. Um, Letnin, is kind of falling out of the lineup and he's not really growing anymore. Plus any old player like the player we'll be getting kind of fits our scheme and everything better than he does. And since we're not really playing him in a role that uh, he doesn't really, you know, agree with, he's not very happy and uh, obviously wants to, uh, to play more. So in this one, those two guys will be heading over to the LA Kings as well as a second round pick. And we'll be getting Semenov here, Stanislav Semenov. Uh, he's had 15 points this year. He's positive 16, 20 minutes, time on ice average. Uh, former fourth overall pick. Good left-handed, big, younger defenseman. Uh, somewhat younger, I should say. Plus, he fits our top four defensive pairings. Plus, power play and penalty kill. Uh, so, obviously, having those special teams in there always helps out. I know you can't see it behind me. But either way. He wants to win, and we can do that this year. So uh, he's 26 years old, so he can help us next year as well. And he's got another year on his contract at just under $5.7 million. So as well as that, we're going to be throwing in a very low trade value uh, prospect who has literally like the smallest of trade value. Uh, so it's going to be another left-hand defenseman. So will this one go through? That's the real question, and it will. Perfect. So this will be the final trade on your screen now. So Corrado Lennon and a second round pick to LA Kings for Semenov and Appel Apple. I don't really know. Uh, but either way, this one's going to go through. So let's keep going, figure out what else we need, fix the lines, and get back into the push. 
So for a trade that was gonna start out as almost nothing, turns into a much bigger trade. So we had a, a young player, Ackers here, a left wing uh, who's just growing and uh, not really growing anymore, I should say, 24 years old. I was gonna turn him into another younger prospect around the same overall, but a bit younger. And then I remembered, I wrote down a list of names of player, or older players uh, that are still somewhat good that I could possibly get just to add on to for the playoff run. And then it turned into this trade somehow. So in this trade, Ackers and Fletcher were the two prospects I was gonna swap. But I'm like, wait a second. So they have Chris Tanev, who is 40 years old, still 78 overall, not playing for the Blue Jackets, as well as, is it Brandon or Brendan? I keep getting it up. Brandon Saad, 82 overall, uh, still good, obviously, making $6 million, which kind of sucks. But either way, he's not playing for them as well. Uh, so this whole trade that was just going to be two prospects swapped now turns into this one. So we're adding a third round pick into there to try to match up the trade value. And will this one go through? No, it doesn't. There it is. So we traded away three players, got back three players, and it all works out in the end after a second round pick and a sixth round pick at the end of the day. So we get some older players that are looking for a chance to get back to the playoffs and it definitely helps us out. So let's fix up the lines if we need to and keep acquiring players. So after finishing up all of our trades, we are now ready for the playoff push. Now we only have five goaltenders, which usually I like to go down the stretch with six. However, there was an 85 overall goaltender as a free agent. Uh, so we won't know for a couple of days if we got him or not. Uh, but seeing that he probably wants to play on a team this year, we're going to get him. So we did acquire a goaltender earlier, but let's see if uh, he will sign. Plus, we turned on injuries as well. So that's going to start popping up. Trade deadline, no thank you. We kind of had our own the day before. We also signed some guys to some extensions as well. So Action or Acton was the guy, uh, the free agent goaltender, but we're also going to see some of the guys that we offer contracts to, some of them smaller guys, some of them bigger guys. Glenn Cross, we're keeping. Liston, oh, I thought he was going to sign that. Barron didn't sign uh, another young guy. So a couple of guys that will have to wait till. Uh, Till later in the season, maybe after or maybe the start of the playoffs, we'll uh, we'll see what's happening then. But right now, our focus shifts towards making the playoffs. Regardless of what's happening right now, we have 82 points, so we're gonna have to take this somewhat slow, just given of how close this playoff push is. Like right now, we sit in sixth place in our division, but the points wise, we have 86 which is insane. So we gotta pay attention, like very closely. We only have, what's that, nine games left and we're in an absolute race uh, for the final here. And uh, I wish some way, somehow, that teams that are doing as well as us should not miss the playoffs, uh, you know, personally. But uh, even then, oh wow, a lot of guys have stepped up over there too. So wild card is at 88 points. Uh, which is good enough for second in the Metro. So we have to start winning these games. Basically, long story short, we need to win these games. A 40 goal a year out of Baron, uh, but not really what I'm focused on. The points is what I'm focused on. A point with Ottawa there puts us up to 87. Uh, wild cards up to 90 points. Can we do this? Shoot out win. That's huge, right? We're going game by game here. It's getting down to the wire. So we're one point out right now. Tampa Bay, huge game versus them. Uh, regular time loss. So 92 points. We're still within reach. I'm not going to get worried just yet. Panthers are at the bottom of the league. 40, what was that? 44 points or something like that. They're terrible. Let's win this. Come on. Give us that win. Injuries in the AHL. Don't care. Big win there. 90 one point. We are too good of a team this year to not make it to the playoffs. Right? We have to get in here. Rangers, they're at the bottom-ish 
as well. Win this stuff. Come on. Ooh, big one goal loss. Putting us three points away. We have the Devils who are kind of even with us. Winnipeg. Let's see, it'd be the Jets. They're at the top. And then Tampa Bay is a good team as well. If I remember, where are they? They are right above us. Is this going to come down to the last possible game? Is it going to come down to it? Devils, come on. Huge win. Fuck. 91. We can still get in. And actually, we do have another game against Florida Panthers as well. So I believe we need to win at least two of these games. Okay, now we need to win all three. So I think if we win... How many do we have games in hand or no? No, we have the same amount of games. So we're five points off. So we need everything. Everything possible. And I think that might have clinched it. Man, I don't understand how our first half of the year can go so well. And we're an absolute dominant team pretty much all year long. Then halfway through the season whatever happened completely 180 right i want to go back and look at our first 41 games versus our second 41 games so when you look at back at the entire season in the first 41 games we went 30 10 and 1 Right, an absolutely incredible start. I think we started like 25, 9, and 1 or something like that, too. So 30, 10, and 1 is an absolutely great start. But our last 41 games, we went 15, 24, and 2. So not completely terrible, but not good enough for how good we were at the start of the year. Now we didn't miss the playoffs by much. We only missed it by five points, but still, we lost so much in the last, like, two months that it literally put us out of the playoffs, like, for good. So, not what you want to see, but let's recap the year, see who performed, see who underperformed, and see what we want to do going into next year. So, taking a look through our forwards, Baron, an absolutely incredible year from him, a big resurgent year, if you will, Larkin with another amazing year, uh, Zadina from our second line, that whole second line, a pretty good year, uh, Thirty or pair of 30 goal scorers, and then uh, the only bad you know, downside, they were significantly minus, so... Not exactly sure what we need to do to, you know, help with that plus minus because everyone else seems to have been fine. So I don't know what it was about that second line, uh, but something needs to be addressed. But as you look down there, Krebs, McIntyre, Arsene, all their years, totally fine. Uh, you know, Arsene playing from the third line, still getting uh, 67 points. Can't really complain about that, right? Everyone's got lots of points on the power play. Norris, the one guy from our top nine that's not getting a lot of points, but there's not a lot of points to get when everyone else is producing that well. Uh, but everyone else, Reese, Olofsson, or Olofsson, and Verhage, all performing pretty well. Uh, plus minus, not the greatest down there, but hey, they're not really, uh, well, I guess they're kind of uh, needed to be uh, plus minus fixed there. But uh, to the back end though, Hannafin, Ekblad, Gudis all had amazing years. We knew that. Uh, going forward. I believe that's going to be a career year for Hannafin as well. Because I believe his career was 62 or 63. It was last year was 62. So he had a career year. Career, or not, I shouldn't say career year on the power play. But uh, a very good year from Hannafin. Uh, you know, that's what we got him for. That's what we're paying him. 11, was it $11.5 million or something like that uh, is to get those points. Now, uh, you know, when I see that type of points, I'm thinking more point per game. But either way, uh, it's a simulation. We got lots of points from our forwards, so I can't really be super upset. But obviously with Gudis, I'd like his plus minus to be a lot better than that, uh, a little bit more positive, if you will. Um, seven off since he came over, I think he put up a couple of points. Not really too worried about that, but we'll uh, we'll have him going into next year. Uh, man, obviously his production dropped a lot playing down the third line, but you know what it is what it is. Uh, Marlo, we did call him up after we traded away uh, Corrado and Lettinen. Uh, a few points, minus three. Not exactly what I wanted, but 
Uh, either way, I wanted to give him a, a taste and a, and a good run in the NHL. Uh, but to their goaltenders, uh, this was the guy that we got, Joseph Wall. He was a uh, 70 something over 75 overall starting goaltender for a team and uh, they weren't doing too well but Zanetti uh, maybe sh I should have uh, done something with him but again an 87 uh, he was an 87 overall goalie uh, was performing really well uh, at the start of the year then like I said something hit and everything flipped 180 uh, Rezo with a big year. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do something. We might have to sign and trade him because uh, his contract is up and he, I can no longer uh, send him a qualifying offer. He's a UFA now. Uh, so we'll have to uh, address that going forward. But a, uh, a pretty good year for Reza. I mean, for basically getting taken over, his net getting taken over uh, from Zanetti, but then not really seeing the results was, uh, was something big on that. But either way, let's take a look through our AHL team now where uh, Liston had a great year, Pan had a good year, and then Acton, who he signed, uh, had a pretty good little stint there after I best lines everything. Uh, but three good goaltenders there all had great years. Uh, Marlo was down here, remember, for pretty much most of the year. Uh, so he was their leading guy with like 50 or something points uh, when we called him up. But everyone else did fine. Everyone played fine. You know, all the numbers uh, you know, are fine. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, Owen, Scuffison, Ho, and Absut, I don't really know, and even Savard down here, and even Denisov down here, all with fantastic years, uh, all more than a point per game, and uh, all had extremely, uh, you know, very productive seasons, so uh, this is what the problem is, we have, what's that, five, six young guys that all want to look for an NHL spot, yeah, we don't have a spot open for them, so Maybe we bring up Owens next year or or somebody, but you know I will have to uh, wait and see and uh, see what's available in the off season. But a great year from Grand Rapids. So as we uh, as we watch them play out the playoffs, I'm gonna go sign some of those player or offer contracts to some of those players that are expiring that we definitely want, and then see where we go from there. A disappointing way to end the year. We were good enough, but not at the right times. And unfortunately, we uh, we fell at the wrong time as well. But either way, we only had one retirement at the end of the day uh, that was really notable. Brandon Saad ends up retiring. The other couple older guys that we had end up retiring as well. But nothing that's going to affect our big club this year. And also, we might be in a little bit of danger trying to re-sign some of our big key pieces. But we'll have to wait and see how everything unfolds in the next episode as that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy, hit that like button down below if you haven't yet. Or if you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe, turn on those post notifications so you never miss an upload. And don't forget, you can always change your mind later. But with all that being said, guys, we'll see you in the next one.